Good morning, Grace Community Church. My name is Kaysen Calfit, and I'm a junior at Central Valley Christian. Over spring break, I had the pleasure of going down to the Mount of Olives Children Village in Europe on Mexico, and I'm going to share with you a bit about how I saw God working in me and through those around me. This year, I was in the Yoropon town for VBS, and I had the opportunity to be a craft leader. After the Bible story that we acted out each day, I was in charge of coming up with a simple and fun craft to do. The kids enjoyed it, and it was fun to see everyone making something cool despite the language barrier. My highlight for the week was playing with the kids at the orphanage. Playing on the playgrounds and chasing them around playing tag was super fun. I remember having conversations with kids in Spanish, and sometimes my Spanish accent was really bad, so the kids would start laughing and make fun of me. I didn't care because I was laughing with them. It was awesome to see how I could have conversations with them and they could understand me. Another fun part about the trip was when I was digging a ditch for the rainwater to flow into so it didn't flood the road. I was with Stephen and some other girls working on the service project, and we were digging out the dirt and making a big dirt pile. While we were doing this, we were all complimenting each other. We were going around and pointing out attributes that made each person stand out in their own special way. Not only did it make the time go by way quicker, because with the warm sun beating down on us, it got tiring, but also made us feel encouraged. I was surrounded by people that I knew cared about me, and I cared about them. Something that challenged me on this trip was the migrant camp. This was my first year going to the migrant camp because I didn't visit when I went last year as a sophomore. Seeing the living conditions that these people were living in made me really emotional. It was hard for me to see how they could be so joyful and yet have so little. I saw some houses being held together with sticks and tarps. I remember at our first stop, kids and mothers were climbing a wall to get over to our group because they knew we had supplies for them. I handed this one mom a pair of shoes and she wouldn't take them. She explained to me that she already had shoes that worked fine for her. Seeing people with so little and not being selfish really made an impact on me. It could have been so easy for those people to take everything, but they knew there were other people that needed it more. At each stop, we ended by praying with everyone who lived in each house. It was amazing to see the faith each person had despite them having close to nothing. It was hard for me to not feel guilty for having so much. In American culture, we have so much, so it was hard to look at those people and not feel sorry for them. But they're so happy and they're so rich in their faith. Throughout this experience, it taught me to be grateful for all that I have, and it was a good reminder to see how God blesses each person differently. When I signed up for this trip back in January, I was pretty pumped. I had been sophomore year, so I felt like I knew what to expect. However, this trip was far better than I ever could have imagined. Maybe the trip didn't go as planned on our first full day. We were supposed to go to the church services in Yerapan and El Zorio, but God had other plans. Instead, God dumped rain the whole Sunday so we couldn't drive on the dirt roads. Honestly, that day was so fun. It's a great way to start the trip. Everyone bonding together in the lodge, playing cards, was truly a sweet moment. It was refreshing to see us all together, having a good and relaxing time, and it helped prepare us for the coming week of VBS. I think being flexible is a great quality to have, and it made the trip a lot different from the previous year. At VBS, there was this one mom who brought her son. He was a super sweet little kid. I was talking with his mom, and she was telling me that she was so grateful for the VBS because she knew we were doing great things to further her son's faith. Seeing all the parents advocate for their child's faith was really amazing to me. It made me think of my own parents and all the ways they have helped shape my faith and continue to nurture it. I think that we should all try and look out for all our fellow believers. Checking in on them and praying for them are just a few of the many ways we can look out for each other. For our quiet time devotions each morning, we all read out of the book of Acts. We read about Saul's conversion and how he was a main focal point of the gospel being spread. In Acts 2, all the Jews were wondering why everyone was acting so weird, but it was because there were Christians filled with the Holy Spirit. Paul, or Peter, was able to defend the Christians because he knew the Old Testament so well from what Joel had prophesied. That should encourage us to not only be knowledgeable about the Bible, but also live it out. Live the way Jesus and the other apostles lived their lives. Acts 2.21 says, But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This seemed like a very fitting verse for this mission trip because not only were we teaching others about God's grace, but we were also reminded of God's love for us no matter where we come from or what our background is. Thank you.
Hi, my name is Colin Bell, and I'm a freshman at Central Valley Christian High School. This year, I had an opportunity to help at this uh, Mission Mexico trip. God used us in many ways throughout the trip. One way that God used us was to put on vacation Bible school for the kids in both El Zureo and Urapan. At VBS, uh, we sang songs and danced with the kids, did crafts, games, and story time. Most importantly, we taught them the gospel. After t story time, two or three of us would share the gospel with the kids. After that, we'd ask if any of them wanted to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Throughout the week, many kids gave their life to Jesus. After VBS was finished for the day, we were able to help maintenance at the orphanage and lodge. We had the option to weed, help with water control, pour concrete, and many other things. Besides helping with maintenance, we could also play with the kids at the orphanage. It's one of the highlights of the trip for me. Um... Despite the language barrier, I felt we were able to connect with many of the kids, both at BBS and at the orphanage. Throughout the week, I could see God working through us. This, was, this just shows that the love of Christ transcends language and culture. During the trip, the Lord used me and stretched me from the very beginning. One of the things I was most nervous about when going on this trip was having to use my knowledge of Spanish to help translate. On our first day of the trip at the border, we had some issues with the rule about filling out visas in order to be able to get into Mexico. Our adult translators were meeting us in Mexico, so they were not there to talk with Border Patrol. So I was called on to translate. God was sure stretching me. After two hours of translating instructions about the visas and talking with the border agents, we were finally able to enter Mexico. Looking back, I know that God used me at that moment to grow in my confidence to translate. This prepared me to use it for even greater purposes throughout the rest of the week. If I could travel back in time to January, I would tell myself, that I don't have to be perfect to make a difference. As I said earlier, I was very nervous that I would be expected to know everything because I knew Spanish before the trip. This worry was in the back of my mind for a lot of the trip, but God taught me that I don't need to be perfect, I just have to be willing. I think that that lesson is something we can all work on remembering. Stepping out and serving the Lord can be scary. I know when an opportunity arises to serve, many things can hold you back, but I also no, the reward is always greater than the risk. If I let my fear take hold of me and keep me back from serving Mexico, I would have missed out on not only blessing others, but also being blessed myself. So I challenge, my challenge to everyone here today is don't hold back. When an opportunity to serve presents itself, whether you feel equipped or not, just serve and trust in him. If you are willing, God will provide what you need. A verse I would like to leave you with is Colossians 3, verse 17, which says, Whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving, faith, giving thanks to God the Father through him. In Mexico, when I was feeling nervous or not ready for the challenges ahead, I reminded myself that if my focus was to do everything for his glory, then that was enough. Thank you, Grace Community Church, for your prayers, encouragement, and support. Good morning. My name is Bailey Robb, and I'm a freshman at Emmanuel High School. This year, I got the opportunity to go down to Mexico and serve alongside the high school ministry. I more specifically helped with the older kids' VBS in Europon. There were many memories that I hope will always stay with me. For instance, playing tag with the kids at both VBS and the Children's Orphanage was so fun and a little exhausting. Together, we sang, danced, and told Bible stories shared the hand motion gospel, and played games. Many kids came to know Christ, which was so special since we are commissioned to share the good news. After our VBS, we would walk up the dirt road to a basketball court playground. There, it was so heartwarming seeing how much the kids enjoyed the little things we brought them. The kids really didn't have much at all, but could find the greatest of joys in getting a balloon sword, a sticker, or simply drawing all over our faces. It was amazing seeing the bonds created between the kids and the high schoolers. Though we had only been with them a few days, it was like we were best friends that just couldn't be separated. Our service was not only with the kids, though. In the afternoons, we did service projects. I personally did some weeding and clearing a canal. It was honestly fun getting to see what happens when you set aside time like that to do hard work. You find the joys of seeing what is sown from it. One of my favorite things of all was our evening worship, testimonies, and discussion. 
The way worship was so simplistic but held so much power. I felt God moving through all of us when we really chose to focus in on what we were singing. So often, I find myself straying away from the true heart of worship. In those times, I think it's the best thing to do is close your eyes, pray, and reflect on the power of the Lord and the wonders he has done. Following that were testimonies. I felt like I was able to learn more about those who I was not as close with. Everyone's testimony is so unique, but at the same time we struggle with similar things. That gives us even more a reason to go through life together and really value time and fellowship. To finish off the night, we would have time to review from that morning's quiet time. We got to share feelings, thoughts, and clarify what Acts was telling us. It was truly amazing how powerful God moves through scripture and how much we can apply these ideas to our own life. Having a specific time down there has inspired me to challenge myself to have a specific time to read God's word at home. Reflecting on my freshman year, I have three main takeaways from the trip. First of all, to not use the time I had to stress about things at home. This only produced worry and caused me to dwell in myself more than God, not placing my satisfaction in him alone. Secondly, finding joy in him and his creation. Some of the mornings, I would wake up early to run. Though it was tiring going round and round the tenth of a mile loop for 50 minutes, it was beautiful getting to see the sunrise. It was such a great reminder of how often we forget to look around at the little things God places in our life, just like that sunrise. Lastly, I would love to learn more about Spanish and practice and communicate more properly with kids, though hand gestures and lo siento are acceptable. As a church, there are a few ideas I would say have been set upon my heart. One, to not lose passion. In the Yorkbound service, Pastor Stevens spoke about how we are united. Together, the Yorkbound church and ours both have the same goal, to be the light of the world. It is really important not to lose sight of what God has in store for us. To prevent this from happening, we must stay rooted and firm on the truth, reading our Bibles to grow in relationship with the Lord, not letting our steps become stagnant, but instead actively in prayer in the Word. God didn't leave us alone. He has gifted us with an amazing church and wonderful people to grow with. On Sunday, when it was raining and we couldn't drive safely to the churches, the Lord still had a plan. We were able to have fellowship with one another, spending time together as a family in Christ. Throughout this whole experience, I now set my eyes upon God's plan for next year's trip. To close, a few verses I find of high importance in my daily walk are Psalms 115.1. It says, not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory because of your love and faithfulness. And Romans 12, 11, that says, Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. We are commanded to serve with a heart of worship because of his love and faithfulness in our lives. I believe the Lord has allowed our church to do that down in Mexico. We wouldn't have been able to do this without Grace Community and all the others who supported us. It was a very impactful trip for the whole team. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. My name is Justin Kende, and this is Noah Nichols. Uh, we want to give you a little taste of what a server, uh, evening service looks like at the Lodge in Mission, New Mexico. After dinner, we'll uh, go into a time of worship that just has a couple guitars, maybe a piano, and all of our voices. It's a wonderful time to just worship together. After that, we go into a time where each student will take turns giving their testimony, and Stephen will randomly select who goes, and you don't really know when you're going throughout the week. Uh, today, Noah is going to give the testimony he gave uh, at Mission to Mexico, um, and normally how that plays out is when you get chosen, you'll, you'll walk up to the front, choose someone to say a couple words um, about you and pray for you, um, and then you'll give the uh, testimony. So... Without further ado, I'm going to pray for Noah, and he'll give his testimony. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for uh, the person Noah is, his willingness to serve, um, and willingness to, to come up here and, and share. I ask that you will speak clearly through him, and that the words he says will be exactly what you want him to say. There's no more and no less. Thank you. Amen. Good morning. My name is Noah Nichols, and I'm a junior in high school. I have four siblings, and I'm the second oldest. I was blessed to grow up in a Christian household 
where we went to church every Sunday and were involved in Awanas as long as I can remember. I gave my life to Christ at a young age, but it definitely wasn't an easy road from there. I faced many struggles that have tested my faith over the years, but I've managed to come out of them better than I was before and have even more of a desire for God. Freshman year in, of high school, I made a commitment to read my Bible more and to try to pray more consistently, which I did. But towards the end of my freshman year, I realized that I had been reading the Bible and praying just to check a box. I noticed that my Bible reading wasn't intentional and I didn't take anything away from it. And more often than not, I would zone out while reading and get to the end of a chapter without remembering what I read. But it wasn't just my Bible reading that I was lacking, it was my time in prayer too, or more so my lack of time in prayer. I have a mindset of I'll pray later when I'm not so busy, but if I don't have time for it today, then oh well. Not only would I procrastinate on praying, but when I did pray, it was all about me. I would say the same thing every time, and it was more of a list of requests than a conversation with God. At the time, I didn't have a good understanding of prayer and what it truly meant. It wasn't until I heard a sermon about praying and its significance that I really knew what prayer was meant to be. I realized that my praying wasn't how prayer was designed. It was at Beach Camp 2022 that I decided to change my way of reading the Bible and praying. This was also the year that I got baptized. A few weeks after Beach Camp, I got a text from Justin asking if I wanted to read through the whole Bible. This had proved to be very helpful because it kept me accountable and diligent in my Bible reading. I made it a priority to set aside time in my day to not only read my Bible, but to spend time in prayer too. A quote that stood out to me was, Without prayer, our study is nothing more than an intellectual pursuit. With prayer, it is a means of communing with the Lord. Prayer is what changes our study from the pursuit of knowledge to the pursuit of God himself. As I read my Bible every night, I focused on my prayer too. I made sure that when I did pray, I did it to build a genuine relationship with God. During these last few years, I've been living by a quote from Master Pastor Stephen. You don't grow in a week, you grow weekly. I've heard it said by many of the people on my high school staff throughout my years in high school and I've been trying my best to remind myself of it and make it true. So as I read my Bible and pray every night, I remind myself of my commitment to grow weekly. The verse I want to close with is 1 Timothy 4.15. Give your complete attention to these matters, throw yourself into your tasks so that everyone will see your progress. Thank you. morning. Thank you, students. It really is a joy to hear their stories and their testimonies about uh, this mission trip and all the ways it impacted them and all the ways that God worked in them and through them. Uh, I want to take a minute and just say thank you, Grace Community Church, for making this possible. Um, it truly is without your, your prayers, your support, all the resources that you donate and, and give uh, to, to equip this church, to, to equip this, uh, this team uh, it really, this, tri this trip would not happen without you, and so we really are grateful, grateful for you. Um, one thing I w did want to note as we, uh, before we continue any further, is that the junior high also um, was planning to have a service project, uh, a day spent up at Heartland Christian Camp doing uh, service and ministry work for them, preparing them for their summer ministries. Uh, that was scheduled for last Saturday, a day that normally would be very beautiful, but as you know, there was this crazy storm that came through, so we got a, I got a call from the director a few days before who said, hey, Weather is, uh, it is not going to be favorable on, on that day, so we postponed that trip uh, for next Saturday, so the junior high ministry will be serving at Heartland next Saturday, so we're, uh, we, were, we were sad that they weren't able to have a uh, participate in, the, in one sense in this service to share some of their stories, but um, do uh, be encouraged that, that they are going to uh, do great things up at Heartland next Saturday. I want to briefly share four words with you that are really at the heart of our mission trip, uh, our mission trip to Mexico. And as we see it in the New Testament, really, truly what's at the heart of all Christian mission work, um, really everything that we do in Mexico on this mission trip incorporates some, if not, if not all of these words. In our morning quiet time, we are reading for, uh, through the first 12 chapters of Acts. And so the scriptures that I quote will appropriately, appropriately come from, uh, from some of those portions of our reading. The first word is pray. What we see really all throughout the, the New Testament and really all throughout church history is that prayer is the fuel 
of missionary work. We recognize and proclaim in prayer our own weakness and our inabilities to do the true work. We recognize God's prayer or God's power, and prayer is the act of asking for God to work and to intervene in ways that really only he can. Throughout Acts, the disciples were often found praying. Acts 2.42 says, And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to the prayers. In Mexico, we stopped every day at lunch to have a time of team prayer. We prayed before every testimony, as you just saw, and every member of the team rallied at least 10 people to serve on the home front as their prayer partners. The prayers of God's people certainly and absolutely were the one were the were the um, fuel that accomplished the work. The second word is proclaim. The second thing that we see throughout the work of missionaries is a bold proclamation of the word. This boldness isn't about the volume of your voice, but the confidence in the message. Acts 4, 19 to 20 says, But Peter and John answered and said to them, Whether it's right in the sight of God to listen to you rather, uh, rather than God, make your own judgment, for we cannot stop speaking about what we have seen and heard. Every day in Mexico, students shared Bible stories with the children. After that, student, other students would present the gospel message telling the children who God is and how God and how good he is, talking about the plight of sin and the rescue plan of God through Jesus and the way in which we can come into relationship with him. Students gladly shared their own stories about the work that Jesus had done in their life. The gospel message must be audibly proclaimed, and these students did just that. The third word is serve. Acts 9 36 tells us about an incredible woman of service named Tabitha. It says that she was full of good works and acts of charity. When she died, the local church that she was a part of was crushed because of the intentional way that she cared for others. We proclaim the gospel with our words, but we also do that with our hands. There are physical, tangible needs all around us and we are supposed to look for ways to meet those needs. And this team did just that. We served every afternoon around the Mount of Olives facility. We cleared weeds and brush. We repaired washed out roads, dug water, dug water runoff trenches, hung drywall, and anything else that was needed. I love the quote that Colin said in his, in his testimony when he said, we don't have to be perfect to serve, just willing. And certainly there were a team of students, by no means perfect, but absolutely willing to work hard and to serve. And the fourth word is love. Believe it or not, the word, the actual word love, is actually never found in the book of Acts. Some point out that this silence um, in the book is actually deafening. That what Luke is doing is demonstrating the love of God and the church through the service and the sacrifice of the believers. And I find this appropriate because we encountered a language barrier, as has already been mentioned. We could tell the people, te amo, but our, and our students did do that, but more than that, our students showed it. They showed it by letting their face get painted, by playing on the play sets, by playing soccer, by being a part of silly games and making balloon animals with hugs and piggyback rides. One gentleman, Oscar, who, served, um, at the, who serves at Mount of Olives, he's one of the adults who works there, he was telling me how critically important it was that we had kids playing with, that we had our kids playing with their kids every single day. You see, every afternoon we would, we would be given a variety of tasks and we would divvy up the team. We would be told that we need, you know, 10 kids to help dig trenches and we would need a certain number to help weeding and, and all of these things. But the, 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 the um, staff at Mount of Olives has always said, and this was part of our, um, how we divided the, team, the students up, is that there always needs to be a group of our students playing on the playground with the children from, the, from Mount of Olives. 
And he, Oscar talked about the painful homes that these children come out of that have no love. And what they need most of all is people who have been changed by the love of Jesus, demonstrating that exact same love towards them. So Grace Community Church, I just want to say one more time, thank you. Thank you for being an extension of that love. Thank you for being um, a means to which that love reaches those people in the communities of Urafan and El Zarillo. And thank you for equipping us, for praying for us, for allowing us and empowering us uh, to go serve and be a part of this mission. Know that this is absolutely a team effort. This is an all-church effort, and we are so grateful for you to be a part of it. Now, would you pray with me as we close? Gracious Father, we are so grateful for this church. We're so grateful, above all, for Jesus. We are grateful, Lord, that he, in his love, came down, became one of us, died for us, changed our lives, and has now called us to tell others about that exact same love, to tell others about what he has done for them. Thank you for using us, Lord. It really, truly is a privilege. It's a privilege to be your church. It's a privilege, Lord, to go and to serve. And I pray that going forward, Lord, each and every one of us would have eyes that are open to see where you are calling us, to where you are calling us to, to pray, to proclaim, to serve, and to love. Continue to use us, Father. We love you so much. And to you alone be all the glory. We pray this in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you, church. You're dismissed.